Let's do our deep dive into um, this traveling thing because it's such oh, yeah. a massive part of your world. I mean, you're constantly on a plane. I worked out when I was doing Formula One, I think we spent probably six months in the air and on flights and in hotel rooms. So, I mean, that it is a crazy, crazy amount of time that you're spending in that environment. So how do you make it best work for you? And how do you get off the other end of a really long haul flight, not feeling completely shattered and rubbish and actually able to kind of do the job that you can do? Well, the short answer is there isn't a short answer. I think everybody has to listen to their own bodies. I think everybody has to adjust and do what works for them. I mean, Karun Chandok has all sorts of great advice on how to beat jet lag. But the truth is, for me, I sleep when my body needs it because I have such interrupted sleep as it is. I'm mm. not, you know, probably that's where I'm going wrong. But I do listen to my body and I will just take the opportunity to kick wherever I can. I'm unbelievable at having a power nap. So right now, if you challenge me to, <laughs> nothing to do with your chat, I could close my eyes and fall asleep. I could. I could do like five minutes and I'll feel incredible after it. Um, but that's probably because I wake up five times in the night. Um, I think hydration is massively important. Um, all the drivers say that a lot of the drivers won't eat plain food because there's too much salt in it mm. and they'll bring their own food onto the plane or they won't eat anything on the plane but they'll all keep really hydrated so um recently when i traveled to japan and it was basically over my birthday and i missed my whole birthday and i really milked this and the old violins because i took off before my birthday started <laughs> i landed after it had finished <laughs> <laughs> and I said to Damon, I was with Damon and Ant, two rubbish drinkers. And I said, you've got to drink with me for the whole flight. And they were like, absolutely not. So I was like, no, no, no. That's when, that's when you really missed, that's when it's you really missed your old school pal, isn't it? That was the moment where you really missed that's your old school That's when I missed pal. you the most, GT. I missed you the most. Um, and actually I could have done with lasers there as well at the time, because at least you'd have had a glass of red with me. But um Anyway, the truth is that alcohol is the worst thing you can do on a flight because mm. you get, I mean, I don't know about you, but do you remember how emotional we used to get watching yeah. films? Something yeah. to do with the altitude. Insane. You'd like it's start insane. sobbing. <laughs> I remember meeting uh, Johnny Herbert for the very first time on a flight to Australia for the first race of the year. <laughs> and I sobbed for the whole flight. And he was thinking, who's this nutter next to me? She's a complete emotional wreck. And I'd just been watching, uh, I think it was like, 40 year old virgin i mean it wasn't even a sad film <laughs> <laughs> there was that moment where Classic, we were on a malaysia it? i remember us getting a, a, a charter flight from australia to malaysia and you looked around the cabin and it was kind of like the, the best of formula one it was like like you said sort of damon yeah. there and johnny herbert there and then martin whitmarsh there and lewis hamilton and nico rosberg and you're like oh my god like you're surrounded by like you say they must choose very wisely what their film choices are so that they do not reveal their emotions in front of the rest of the traveling circus that's true i remember seeing adrian Sutil watching a disney movie i was like oh, i've learned all i need to know about you now i was like that's really cute and his girlfriend at the time was watching some like war film and i was like wow this is a real insight into their personalities but you're right you do look around the plane and you think Oh my God, I'm not sure I'd even get a mention if this plane went down because there's so many more important people than me on this flight. <laughs> so go, true oh, yeah well, i knew we'd, i knew we'd, i knew we'd deviate the minute we got onto this but um so in terms Sorry. of your but in ter <laughs> okay we've established that you've got a rubbish sleep pattern and you need better sleep hygiene in your life yeah. and we know we know that that's true um but in terms of listening to your body clock do you do you pay attention to what it needs and when it needs it because you've always been good with diet and exercise i'm i'm lucky in the Wiggy is like the sugar police. I mean, like he literally banned sugar in this house. I think seeing his parents go through such an incredibly difficult journey with cancer that mm. he's he's educated himself and us on the importance of a healthy diet. And so that's been one thing. Like he's a real nag, but he makes us eat healthily. Um, and he's good therefore in terms of exercise he's on my case i can never train with him he does my head in like you go down to do something he'll go no rep no rep and i go just get out of my grill <laughs> i'm working really hard here don't tell me that i didn't crease my hips enough with that squat go away yeah um but it's um 
it's imp- it's important, I think, to have an ally in that respect. If so, if, if you're living with someone who's drinking and smoking every day, the chances are you're gonna, you know, you can't beat them, join them. But if somebody, on the other hand, is saying, right, let's not have any alcohol during the week, let's not um, eat anything. Um, that's particularly bad for you. And let's just encourage our kids to have a healthy diet. Then that's great. We've got this new app. You've got to get it, Georgie, called Yucca, Y-U-K-A or Yucca, Yucca, Yucca. Anyway, a load of doctors devised this app and you basically scan the barcode of the product that you're buying and it will tell you the content of it in really simple form and it will rate it out of 100. So wow. you'll be really surprised the stuff that isn't as good for you as you think it is and vice yeah. versa. So what it will also do is if it gives it a low score, it will tell you similar alternatives that are much better for you. So what I say to the kids now is it takes the onus off me. I say to them, right, let's do what Yuka says. So Yuka decides basically. So they'll go, can we have this? Can we have this? And I'll scan it and they'll go, soz. Yuka says, uh uh-uh. But then I'll find alternatives that's still tasty and, and works. That's like the, that's like the 2023 version of those bracelets that used to say, what would Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs> what would Yuka do? What would Wiggy say? Oh, my God. Uh, that's a good it's, way of um, doing it, though, brilliant. right? Because you're engaging them in the process and you're trying to make them think yeah. about it in a way which that they're not thinking that they're thinking about it. Exactly. And they, you know, they're all into Prime and they'll go, oh, you know, mm. Prime, so good for you. And I go, well, let's just have a look at that, shall we? <laughs> and we'll scan it. It's brilliant. It tells you straight away and it's a free app. Brilliant. Okay. So that's a good way of doing it. And so in terms of your, if you're starting your day and you've just done a flight, like you say, to Japan or somewhere like that, and you're, you know, about to go live um, uh, on TV um, at one of the Grand Prix, how do you, how do you get through? How do you do the best performance that you possibly can on the most limited amount of resource that you've got in your system? I think that, you, you you kind of just knuckle down and get on with it. A little bit of the old toughen up stuff. Grit. Um, yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing to push yourself out of your comfort zone, even if you are feeling a bit crap. I think that actually that's something I definitely want to teach Wilf and Willow is that sometimes you just have to get on with it. Even if you're feeling rubbish, just push through that, um, push through that level of comfort and know that things won't come easily in life. And that's okay. Um, but I do think listen to your body and I do think talk to your mates. Um, it's difficult because you don't want to always be feeling like you're divulging too much to your teammates. You always want to put on a certain front that you're feeling okay, but there's always mates on the team. And actually that's one thing I really did miss when you left is that you were my go-to person to talk to. And you, you do sometimes feel a little bit, um, isolated maybe um and there's been a couple more girls have joined the team lately Naomi Schiff Bernie yeah. Collins and I feel like there is a more uh, of a sense of you, you do need a couple of mates around you and I think that's really important and it's no weakness to say do you know what I'm struggling and actually after Flackstock I really did struggle I went to Belgium straight away after it and I had a massive cry to Naomi and she opened up a bit to me about her home life and we just we bonded in that moment and it really helped us both and I, I don't think there's any shame in that I think it actually it's crucial survival mechanism. Yeah, girls are normally so much better at doing that than guys, aren't they, um, by and large? Yeah. But we're seeing much more that that's becoming a thing that guys feel like they can share in that way. Um, a few kind of choice people coming out and talking about their mental health has made such a big difference to the bigger population of men feeling like they actually can share a bit more. I mean, never in a million years yeah. would, you know, Ben, who is someone that's never sort of turned to a psychologist or anybody like that to talk through anything is now even starting to realize that not just him but definitely different people on the team require different types of support systems yeah, and they need and they definitely. need different backups it's a bit like it's a bit like when you watch that Beckham documentary and you see you know Alex Ferguson put his arm around some and then you know told others to get on with it it's like what does a great yeah. manager do um you know in those mm. moments where p- some people really need a little bit of love and care and other people need to be told so it is it is just about knowing isn't it where you know where your teammates sit on that spectrum Definitely. And I think actually all credit to to Billy, our, our boss in F1, is that I think 
years ago, he thought the stick approach was the thing for everyone across the board. And he has got to know me better and knows that I need a carrot. I need an arm around me. I don't need to be bollocked for something. I just need someone to go. It's all right. I've got your back. And, and, and he's grown. And as a result, you know, he's, he's a different person now and he's, he's a leader in our team. And I think honestly, that's, that's been, that's been really important on a personal level for me, but I need to learn from that as well. And I need to feel that with my kids, you know, I feel like I'm always nagging them about their homework. Sometimes you just need to put your arm around and go, okay, why don't you want to do your homework? And don't say it's because <laughs> you want to play on your switch. <laughs> yeah. But have just, you seen their homework you know, these days? Have you seen what they're being asked to do? It's insane. Hell. It's like, well, I wouldn't want to be doing Georgie, their homework anyway. I, stand a chance. I know, right. I know. <laughs> Thank God but we're through that. Because they're very, very, well, th- th- absolutely. And I think that um, you do need, to be a bit of a psychologist when you're a, when you're a parent. Mm. And actually what I've come to realize is my two kids are very, very different and they respond very differently to different things, you know, to your approach as a mum has to be tailored towards the child. You can't just assume. And it's the same in business. It's the same in formula one. It's the same in sailing. It's the same in, in life generally, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is really, really true. Nat, thanks. It's been amazing. It's been really nice to catch up. Oh. Actually, we've had a we've had a really good catch up. I knew this would go on. I knew well, we'd like program ourselves well, in for an hour and end up doing two. <laughs> oh, it, Georgie, honestly, I love you so much. I always say to Wiggy that um, you're one of those mates that it doesn't matter if I don't see you for three months or three years. It it always feels the same when we reconnect. Mm-hmm. 